the plays that are going to work, but when you actually get out there and they're starting to happen, your confidence rises, and he's running with terrific ability right now. They run again on first down. Cook. He takes this for about six down inside the 40. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Second quarter action, two minutes to go on divisional round weekend. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll try to throw now. Cousins. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there. And now it's second down. At the 35. Setting up the screen for Cook. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's gain of 13. It's a first down. And the working out of the gun. Cousins completing it to the right side. John inside the 10 at the 8. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Cousins again. Score. Touchdown. Vikings complete from eight yards out, and the Vikings are going to retake the lead. So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time, and they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got to figure out some way, somehow, to slow them down. Do they blitz a little bit more? Do they play more zone coverage? Right now, they don't know where to go because they're hitting them in every direction. Jason Sanders. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Takes this about five yards deep. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Devontae Adams in the Packer offense heading back out. About set to get this drive started. The Green Bay offense at the line. And looking at this situation, Charles, you got more than a minute. You've got all three timeouts. Probably no need to play this safe. And got his man complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That one good for 37 yards. I think it's pretty safe to say that initially they had to be thinking about trying to get into field goal range. But after that shot right there, They've got to be thinking bigger right now. And that was probably their thought offensively. If we hit this, great. Let's go for the end zone. If not, settle for a field goal. Looks like they can try to hit Pater. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked by Jeff Gladney. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Oh, and that's a nice job defensively to get a piece of the football. He's going to pop it into the air. And then it's the tip drill. And good concentration by him to react to it and pull in the interception. 30 seconds remain in this first half as they come up here first and 10. Following the interception, Cousins. Smith catches left side. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. And this time, they'll just keep this on the ground. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. So we've come upon halftime here in this NFC Divisional Round. And now due to apparent time constraints, we fast forward to the beginning of the second half. A trip to the NFC title game hanging in the ballot. Second half action back underway. Oh, a good looking return set up here. And they've got it up past the 35, so pretty good starting field position. Their own 36 yard line. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you turn that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, 
change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try to hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's see if they do just that. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. And he's all the way down to the six-yard line. A big chunk of yardage there, 37 yards. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Cousins hands And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. They'll run for it with Cook. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Delvin Cook, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. And the formula there on the two-point try, they go five wide, not even the option to hand the ball off. They got it. They tried to create space, and there isn't a whole lot of it there for the defense. What you're trying to do is make sure that someone, if they're going to catch the ball, make them catch it behind you because they run out of space with the back line. But in this case, the offense figured it out. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. And the interception last time on the opponent's side of the field, certainly not what they wanted. Put it mildly, that is so frustrating because that signifies there's a drive going on. You're in a good spot, great place to run some of your best offense. Instead, they turn the ball over. Yeah, turn the ball over last time. See if they can avoid doing it here. Looking deep for Adams. Well, this is taken in, it's complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A big pickup of 38. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. And between the last two plays, they've moved it over half the length of the football field. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. That's going to be caught. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Looking deep for Adams. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Devontae Adams with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Packers have cut it back within a score. The Packers keeping the offense out there now as he'll go for two. Again, he'll drop to throw. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two. They don't get it. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. And you see Dalvin Cook and the offense heading back out. He is hoping to find the end zone for a third time, and we sit now in the third quarter. And nothing would excite him more. I think even more so is offensive line. Anytime you've got a guy scoring that many times, that means you've done a really nice job in front of him. You're always giving props to the big fellas up front. It's always a good idea. Those are some massive men. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. They run it again with Cook. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. 
Cousins. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. And he's going to be marked down short of the first down. Needed the 40, but he's a yard or two shy. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Looking deep for Adams. And almost intercepted. It would have been his second pick of the game. Instead, it'll be second down. He was covered by Jeff Gladney. From deep in their own territory, they look to throw. Looking deep for Adams. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked up by Anthony Harris. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. They'll take over. Partner, when you're playing cover two, this is like a tag team for the safeties. Each of them gets a half-field responsibility. Their job stay as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone. Read the football and go make a play. In this case, the free safety made the best play. An interception. Oh, he's got a man wide open. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. Minnesota. From the gun, here's Cousins. Yeah, he's got it. And the Vikings are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. From the two now, second and goal. Brings up second and goal at the two-yard line. One quarter remains for a trip to the NFC title game. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. On second and goal, Cook waiting in the backfield all alone. Cousins to throw it. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Kirk Cousins with three touchdown passes now in the afternoon. And the Vikings capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. And his kick is right through. Scoring summary. Three-play drive. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. From the six. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Over first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. And here now the offense heading back out there. And this one not officially in the bag, but it's looking more and more like you and I are going to be in these same seats next week for a game to go to the Super Bowl. And it's contrary to our meeting with the, with the visitors, wasn't it? Remember when we went over to the hotel before the game and one of the themes they kept hitting us with was, let's put the pressure on the number one seed and see if they can handle it. Let's, let's do that. Well, they're the number one seed for a reason. Best team all year long. They're showing it again in this game. But again, he was looking for Devontae Adams. And now it's third down. Looking deep for Adams. And that is going to be pulled in one-handed. Wow. The chalk that one up is a gain of 34 on third down. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and ten. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. He'll head out of bounds inside the ten. Mark it down at the nine. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. This is caught. 
And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A nice gain of eight that time, and it's second and goal at the one-yard line. And it's caught. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. No gain on the play. Brings up third and goal. They'll look to throw again. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So now fourth and goal. You're trailing by a decent amount here. What are you doing, Coach Davis? Well, I've got to think to myself, just how many more opportunities am I going to have this close and have this chance? I've got to go for it right here. The clock's dwindling on me. Let's go get it done. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Jay Sternberger. Jay Sternberger. A beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Packers make some inroads here on that deficit. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. But it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. They find themselves open for an easy touchdown. able to recover the hands team does its job well, fourth quarter they felt like they needed the football back unfortunately they couldn't get it and I know we brought analytics into the game and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick 80% of the time the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. And it's third. to throw Cousins and the Packers give him nowhere to go and they bring him down now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts that's going to be their second they'll be left with one more plus the two minute warning and we'll be back Colquitt on to kick as he sends it away and this is going to be ruled out I think just inside the 20 yes it will side judge calls it at the 19 yard line Marching back onto the field now, Devontae Adams and company getting set to go. Two touchdowns to his credit so far. Charles, I'm curious, do these wide receivers, what do they go in with each week? Is it different week to week for the goals that they personally set for themselves, do you think? I doubt that it's different from week to week. Maybe because of game plan, they know that one guy might be featured more than the other. But all in all, these guys are looking for 100 or more yards in, in, in receiving. But the biggest thing, getting into the end zone. And how about him? He's gotten there twice in this game. He has indeed. Looking deep for Adams. He's got a man complete. It's a big play for the pack on third. And even 40 yards. First and 10 at the 41 yard line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one score game. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked up by Mike Hughes. Intercepted by the Viking. Partner's bad enough when you just can't hold on to the football. But when your quarterback's throwing it to the other team, that's three interceptions now, four turnovers for the game. You really have no chance to win the football game. I'll try and wind down some clock with Cook. And he'll take this one only up to about the 21. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. A gain of a yard brings up second and nine. Again, it's Cook. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. Tackled at the 25-yard line. And now the Packers going to burn their third and final time. As 
as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play. They go down to a knee, and with that, they're off to the NFC title game. So they file for the exits here in silence. And what a job to come in on the road, divisional round of the playoffs, and you get to end it by going down to a knee. Now their confidence has to be at an extreme high. That's two weeks in a row they've gone on the road and gotten it done. They don't care where they go. From here on out, they think they can beat anyone. There are going to be plenty of questions that this team needs to answer in the offseason, CD, and one of them may be at quarterback. And let's face it, none of us want to talk about it right here, right now. But for this franchise, this is the offseason discussion because at some point, you hit that fork in the road. Which way are you going to go? And what we saw today was an aging quarterback now with a serious injury on his record, and he definitely did not look like the guy we've seen in the past. They've got a big decision to make about who will be their quarterback next year. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughan. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For that, we say so long, everyone, from Lambeau.